Welcome to Mixed Media Friday. Here I'm gonna take some golden uh, gel medium and I'm gonna apply it all over my pages. And I am using just an art journal with some heavy pages. So these are like, I'm gonna say about 140 pound weight um, pages so that they can withhold, um, they can withstand uh, lots of wet mediums. And this is just a paper black or uh, brown paper bag from just a um, a grocery store and I'm taking these uh, sunrise sunset collection by Prima and this is the a4 pad and I'm just trying to use as many of my scraps from this collection as possible and um, I'm just selecting some patterns I may not use all of them I'm using some and again I'm applying all of them with gel medium onto my onto my page and uh, I don't know if you could see it earlier, but all I did was when I applied my brown paper bag onto the onto the pa uh, pages, I just ripped um, the excess so that I could have kind of that rough uh, ripping effect on the page. And then I'm just applying all these little ripped pieces using gel medium. And I am applying a little bit of gel medium over the top to ensure that my pieces stay down and they don't actually curl. Um, when I keep applying, uh, when I start applying a little bit more mediums to them. So that's what I'm doing right now. A very random placement. I don't really have a plan as to where I want them to go. I'm just kind of playing with it as I go. Sometimes that's how I create. I don't like to have a plan all the time. I just allow my creativity to just kind of take me there. Now I'm taking some cotton tape by Prima and uh, just applying it throughout my page sort of the same way that I did with my ripped pieces of paper. And then this is just some uh, ribbon that I had found it, I think at a thrift shop and I'm just applying it with gel medium. It's a little bit hard for it to stick on so off camera I really just uh, hung on to it until it, it really um, adhered to the page. And then I'm taking some drywall tape. I was trying to rip it, but it wasn't ripping very well. And um, I love that cool excess when I ripped it right there. And then I'm just applying it through my page. It creates a lot of texture and dimension on my page. So I do like to use drywall tape um, often in my designs as you've seen in the past. This is some one of my absolute favorite Prima laces. And you guys all know this, this is just like my number one lace to go to. Um, it usually stays in my hoard vault, but I think it's about time for it to come out and, and come and play. This is another one um, of the fabulous Prima laces, and I only have a small bit, so I'm using it on this art journal. It's really, really neat looking. And it kind of needs to be ironed a little bit, but the gel medium really allows me to open it up and... Uh, and spread out so that works really really well and then I'm taking some twine and I'm just literally applying a whole bunch of gel medium on my page very randomly and just plopping some of that twine down and allowing it to fall wherever it falls just to give the page a little bit more texture before I start applying all my mediums and I'm doing the same thing on the bottom just to, to create a little bit of balance Next, I'm gonna grab some gesso and my knife, and you can use like an old credit card or something like that, and just apply gesso throughout my page. You could really use anything. And my intention is to cover some of that color from the paper, and um, you'll see that the gesso really picks up all those creases and folds and lace and all that wonderful texture, it just picks it up. I'm pretty much done. I'm just um, trying to ensure that I get as much as possible so that uh, when I start putting some other mediums, it'll really show up. 
Next, I'm going to make sure I dry it really well. And I'm going to take, this is just a, an old um, Prima packaging, like a flower packaging. And uh, you can adhere it with gesso. It works really, really well. Or you can use multimedia. Here I'm using gesso. I wanted to paint some of it. Wanted to mute it a little bit. I love using my, you know, excess garbage, I guess you could say. I'm taking Broken China Distress Paint by Tim Holtz. And I'm just applying, I'm daubing it a little bit on the page. And with a brush, which is for watercolors, so it's a watercolor brush, I'm just applying a little bit of water over top. So I'm daubing a little bit of the Broken China. And then with my, with my brush, I'm just applying a little bit of water and allowing it to drip. And this way, I really love this because I have a ton of control as to where my drippage is going to go. One of the things that I find sometimes when I'm spraying is I don't really have a whole lot of control about where my spray is going to go. And so this way is just another way for you to control your um, paint and where it's going to go. Plus, I love the Distress Paints for this. They have that beautiful transparency and I just absolutely love it. And Broken China happens to be one of my favorite colors from the collection. And this way I'm just tipping my, my book back and forth until I kind of get the drippage that I want. I'm now applying a little bit of the mustard seed. And allowing it to drip the same way, applying some water and really helping it along. Leaving some places darker than others for a two-tone effect. And when I mix the yellow and the blue, it kind of creates a cool little green color. And I really love that. Now I'm going to take my spiced marmalade. And I'm doing the exact same technique that I just finished doing um, with the rest of the colors. Just allowing them to drip. But one of the things I'm doing here is I'm actually flicking my brush to create kind of a flicking effect. This, I was going through my stash as I'm looking what to put on next on the paper, and I found, I'm going to call it, this is vintage washi tape. Um, and then I'm going to take some of my Tim Holtz uh, washi tape, which I love. It's, this is one of my favorites, and I try not to use it because I try to hoard it in my vault. Um, but this is one of my favorites, so I'm using it here. And one of the new rub-ons... Um, by Tim Holtz. They're just so fabulous. And you guys, I used to hate rub-ons, but these rub-ons actually go on so easily that it kind of reminds me why I used to love rub-ons so much. And so I actually cannot wait to pick up some more because I will, I would use these in any of my art journaling. It's just so, so awesome. And you do have to make sure that your um, stuff is not wet. I My stuff was not dried all the way, which is why some of them were doing some of that uh, funky business over there, but that's okay. I actually kind of like that look. And then here, I'm not actually trying to be perfect when I'm rubbing them on. I kind of want them to be very sporadic, um, and I want to be able to sort of use the words all over the page. I don't really want them to say anything. I just kind of want them to be random words. So that's what I'm doing right there. And I was just experimenting to see if they would rub on to the um, drywall tape, and they didn't, which is fine. But I love that that little this way is up. And I love the words that this um, the these rub ons have. I just love it. And I just wanted to add a little bit of my own writing. Um, I didn't like the pen that I was using, so I just grabbed a Stamper's Big Brush pen and used it. This is another one of the Stamper's Anonymous stamps. And I'm just grabbing some archival ink and stamping it onto just a Actually, the backing of the rub-ons. I didn't want to waste any paper. And I'm just cutting it out. And then I'm going to apply it to my page. And with a little bit of foam dots, just so that it sticks out and it gives the page a little bit of dimension. Now I'm going to go into my little... Uh, stash and I'm gonna grab my metal wings again from the ide ideology one of the ideology wings and using three in one beacon three in one they adhere perfectly with that glue 
and again, I'm going into my ideology stash, one of many, and I'm grabbing some of the clock hands, as well as the tiny gears to go right on the top. I just love those tiny little gears. They're for sure one of my favorite things. Next, I'm grabbing some of the, um, these are little, it looks like dance steps uh, stamp. It's from the same um, Stampers Anonymous stamp set. This is another um, stamp set by Stampers Anonymous, and I just, I love them. I use it all the time. I just love the sewing effect. When I don't have time to go get my machine, this is what I, my sewing machine, this is what I use. And I'm just very randomly stamping throughout my page. Once again, one of the newest stampers anonymous, and I will have all the product descriptions on my blog. So if you're wanting to know exactly what stamp sets I used, just click the link below and it'll take you straight to my blog where I'll have the list of all the products that I used. Next, I'm using some alcohol ink to apply to the um, metal pieces. So this is butterscotch and I'm just kind of mixing them together and I know on the camera it's kind of hard to see um, so it looks a little bit weird like it didn't do anything but um, in real life you'll see once the photo once I show you the photo in the end you'll be able to see the cool effect that um, happened. Next I'm applying a little bit I, the clock was a little bit too white for me so I'm just applying a little bit of the broken china uh, paint and some of the orange as well just to bring it to life a little bit and then I'm grabbing some Inca gold um, this is like that um, rub and buff stuff and it's so cool it just kind of pops makes the wings pop a little bit and at the same time kind of blend into the page so that they're not uh, standing out too much I started by using a brush and now I'm just using my finger because I found that it works a little bit better. This is some extra fluid Liquitex paint and I love to use my fan brush for this uh, effect because it gives it a really beautiful splatter mark. So you could also use a toothbrush uh, for the same type of pen, uh, same type of effect. This is my uh, pearl pen again by Viva Decor and I'm just applying it throughout my page very randomly for a cool raised effect and I thought I was done until I got some funky idea in my head to make circles throughout my page so I'm using some gesso on my finger I don't want them to be too dark and you'll see they'll pop out in a minute I'm about to use some uh, black pan pastel and I'm just taking the um, applicator and I'm just kind of creating a shading effect so you can kind of tell that it is a circle and just creating a little bit more of a circular shape and then blending with my finger it just gives the page another little element I could have probably been done by now but I just I had the idea and I just didn't want it to end now um, I saw those all those um, four or five little words there that I had left over and they just had to go in the circles. It was just perfect and I hadn't thought of it until I saw it when I was cleaning up. So they just had to go in there. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for all the still photos of this project and please go ahead and check out my blog for all the product details. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.